welcome to another edition of the Kilted Homesteader. Today we're going to talk about what's in my toolbox on my N-Series Ford tractor. As you can see, my toolbox is full to the brim and there's a reason and a purpose behind every tool in my toolbox. So let's take the time to lay these tools out and I'll explain why I have these particular tools on my Ford 8N tractor. So as you can see, the toolbox in my tractor is pretty full. And I took all the items out and laid it out on the table here so I can explain what I have in my toolbox and the reasons why I have it. And at the conclusion, I'm going to talk to you about the method I use for a fuel gauge on the tractor and um, explain the, how, how I use it and where I got the information from. So one of the first things that's at the top of my toolbox is the, uh, a set of work gloves. Obviously, it's nice and handy to have a set of work gloves to do work and uh, handling chains and handling dirty things or rocks or anything like that. It's always handy to have something like that on a tractor. Of course, a piece of, of a rag is also handy to, for checking the oil or wiping away oil or grease or things like that just to see what's going on if you're having a problem. Then, because I do some brush hogging with my tractor and we also do some log work and, and some cutting of wood and stuff like that, I have a pair of brush cutters or just regular uh, trimmers they use to you know trim branches. Um, kind of going along, you get a model for a rose branch, it's kind of getting you. It's kind of handy, you just kind of reach in the toolbox, get it out, clip it, and then you can keep, move on and you don't have to worry about facing that multi floor rose again. So, um, interesting uh, fact, I was wanting to get one for my tractor and before I was able to get one, I was out hiking one time in the woods in the middle of nowhere and I looked down and I happened to find them there. So they were, they're not very expensive. I think they were like 12 or $15 on Amazon for that set. But it was just kind of weird that I found them in the middle of nowhere just laying on the ground. So apparently somebody you know, misplaced them or misused them. Um, have a pair of pliers. These are very handy. Um, obviously um, you can use pliers not just for grabbing onto things, but if you use the back part here, you can use it for cutting uh, thin wire and stuff like that. So it's very handy to have for for doing that type of work or just to have a pair of pliers for maybe pulling a pin at that's really hard sometimes you know those those uh pins are those uh linch pins are really hard to pull and you just pull the hairpin clips excuse me i'm talking about you grab them kind of pull them out with the pliers it makes it easy i mean usually i can work my way through it but sometimes you need a pair of pliers if it's real cold out the other thing uh next is a really good quality adjustable wrench um, i looked online did some research and reviews and i found a jut and this rec this was recommended by uh, several people uh, the name is uh, Baco, B-A-H-C-O. Um, I found these on Amazon. I have a couple of pairs of these on uh, different machines that I have. And these are a really nice set of um, adjustable uh, wrench that works well on the tractor. Again, you shouldn't be using adjustable wrenches as a matter of routine, but in a pinch, it comes in handy. Of course, with an adjustable wrench, make sure you have it set to that nut or that bolt. Um, as close, you know, as tight as you can, so it doesn't round off the corners. Next, um, I have a hammer, a ball peen hammer. This I got. I didn't spend a lot of money on on these uh, tractor tools because you know sometimes they have a habit of walking away or getting lost. But I got this uh, ball peen hammer, which is very handy. I, anybody that's worked around machinery know that it's good to have a piece of equipment like that. Um, I got this at Harbor Freight. Didn't pay a whole lot of money. I think it's even got a lifetime warranty on it. And I will tell you though, the handle on this was a little longer. So I shortened it, I cut the handle so it would fit in the toolbox. I think 11 inches is the maximum length you can fit in the toolbox. So I think it's just a little shorter than 11 inches. Or no, any item that's 11 inches, I think will fit in the toolbox. So that's my kind of cutoff. So I keep things at 11 inches in length for use inside the toolbox. So I cut that down, you know, would I do that to my normal hammer around the shop? Absolutely not. But for, you know, making it fit in the application, I trimmed it down. Of course, then I have a Phillips and a regular screwdriver. They're, um, they both come in handy, ob obvious reasons. There's things, there's Phillips head things on, on equipment that I may be towing or on the tractor itself. And then there's also a regular uh, slotted screwdriver bit. Then I have here just some miscellaneous uh, thin wire I keep on the, on the, in the toolbox. It's really handy. There's times you need to wire something in place or just kind of hold something in place and just always handy to have a, a small length of wire with you. Um, when I grew up working on my grandfather's farm in the summertime, we used baling wire. He baled with wire, so baling wire was everywhere. And my, my grandfather's joke was that baling wire holds up the whole world. So we used it, always had different applications that we used it on. So also on my toolbox, and I'm gonna insert, insert a picture here right after I tell you about it, um, so you can see what I did. 
I mounted, because I have my tractor is a 12 volt tractor. Um, it was that way when I got it. I mounted a cigarette lighter um, with a rubber cover cap on it on, outside of my toolbox. So I have an accessory port to plug in a cell phone or something like that. And here's a picture of that. Okay, so you can see that that area where to keep that plug is really handy. And that's the reason why I have a cell phone charger for my iPhone and a, um, a, a charging port. This is like a regular USB one. You can plug other things in besides your cell phone. Obviously you can get these pretty much anywhere, Amazon, Walmart, any, pretty much any place anymore. Even gas stations, I've seen things like this for sale. And so that I have that for that reason. The next thing I have is a jumper wire with alligator clips. I keep this in the toolbox. And the reason why I have something like this is sometimes you may end up having finding a short or something you have to bypass and a pinch to test something if the tractor doesn't start or something's not working right. And this will come in handy for that. One of the uh, individuals that guys have had tractors for a long time, uh, say the new ignition switches at the replacement ignition switches for the uh, N series tractors are prone to failing and not working. Well, this jumper wire on a pinch, you can kind of bypass that or jump those connections. If you have a, if you realize you have a bad switch and you can use this to kind of get you to limp you home or get you home. So one other item that um, is not here that actually wouldn't be a bad item to have. And I do take this with me. If I ever take my tractor more than just in around my area, like say I go to help cut grass at a friend's house or something like that. Something I always take with me now because I had a mishap once before is I take a multimeter, even just a, just a cheap one. Not my real nice one I keep for the garage, but just a small like Harbor Freight, less than $20 multimeter. There's actually room in my, my toolbox for that. I don't keep it there all the time, but in a pinch going down, you know, if I'm going a long distance, I'll, I'll take that along with me just in case something happens, I can help try to diagnose it and rather than have to push a tractor on a trailer, which is not fun, did that once. The last thing that I keep inside my toolbox is a, um, this device here, this is my fuel gauge. Um, I got this uh, off online, I found this, and I was able to uh, get the measurements for one gallon, two gallons, all the way up to 10 gallons of fuel. This is just a paint stick I got when I was at Lowe's. They, um, I was there for some paint and I grabbed an extra stick and I, had, I cut it down a little bit to make that 11 inch mark to make sure it would work. And I had the measurements I found online for the different levels on the fuel tank on the on the n-series tractors so i will make sure to post those measurements down below so you guys if you decide you want to make your own fuel stick instead of a fuel gauge to measure fuel a lot of guys will say well you just you know just open the, the fuel valve two turns and when you start running out of gas open it all the way and you get you get your gallon reserve i try to avoid that i always like to keep my tank full and it's good a place to check to know what's going on and i, I always check it out you know when i've been running for a while I, this tractor typically, like if I'm brush hogging or using it real heavy, you'll use about a gallon an hour. It's a good rule of thumb, I found. But it's so nice to know where things are at and how much is in the tank. Um, and that's why reason I have that also in my toolbox. So this completes everything that I currently keep in my toolbox. I'm curious to see what you all put in your N-Series toolbox that maybe I didn't think about. The, I tried to think as many things, possible things and keep them in the toolbox, but maybe there's something out there that you think that is a good thing to have in the toolbox I'd like to see it. Please post it in the comments below and of course always be respectful to each other. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to, I'd like to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also hit the notification if you'd like to be notified of new videos coming out. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.